everybody, welcome back. Today we are actually going to solve some rational equations. So the reason why they are rational equations is because they are um, equations that have variables in the denominator or in the numerator as well. So we need to learn how to solve these rational equations. So the first thing that we're going to do is take a look at this first example. And our goal is to get a common denominator. It's actually very similar to earlier this week. It's a little bit easier though, because there's not two different fractions on top and on bottom. We just have fractions across this whole equation. So we're going to try and get a common denominator for these three rational expressions. So if you notice, what do they have already in common? They all have a letter K. Here they only have one, but here I have two and here I have two, okay? They also have a six and a three and here I only have a one. So in order to get the common denominator, we need to find what's the common multiple between a six, a three, and a one. So the common denominator between a 6, a 3, and a 1 is actually the number 6. So all of these should have the number 6. Then the common multiple between a k squared, a k squared, and a k. Well, hmm, let me think about it. If I were to write k, then I do k times k, that's k squared. Then k times k times k, that's k cubed. Then k times k times k times k, that's k to the fourth. The one that I can get all of them to equal to is the k squared. So watch this. Now we have to figure out how do I get, <clears throat> or actually, what should I multiply 6k squared with to get 6k squared. The correct answer is, it already is 6k squared, so you only have to multiply it by 1, or by nothing. So 1 times 1 is 1. This one can stay. That's the only one that can stay. Now if you look at the next fraction, <clears throat> 3 times what is 6? And you're going to tell me, oh, Ms. Tohami, the number 2. And then k squared times what is k squared? Times 1. You don't need to multiply anything. So here, I only need to multiply by 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. And then this last one, 1 times what is 6? Oh, 6. And then k times what is k squared? k times k. So actually, I actually have to do 1k times 6k to get 6k squared. So that's why I have to do 1 times 6k is 6k. Now that all the denominators are the same, we actually can reduce them and rewrite this equation. 1 equals 2 minus 6k. Can we solve this equation now? I think we can, so I'm going to write it over here. 1 equals 2 minus 6k. Your first step is to subtract the 2. Then your next step is to divide by negative 6. Don't forget, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And the last thing you just have to check, this is my answer, but I just have to check, if I do plug it in here for one of these, will I ever get a denominator of zero? Because I can't have that. That's what you have to check here. That's what it says right here. To check for extraneous solutions means check if the denominator equals zero, because if that happens, 
then it cannot be an answer. So for example, if here k was 0, so all of this would end up being 0, which is not possible. So this would not be an answer. So this is your final answer, k equals 6. One, I'm sorry, 1, 6. So let's try another example. All right, so another example would be number 5. So if you notice, not all of them are fractions. So let's change it so the last one is over 1. Now, if I want them to have a common denominator, I need to focus on the x, the 5x, and the 1. You have to ask yourself, what can I make all of them be, this, be as a common denominator? So here I have the number 1, I have the number 5, and I have the number 1. What is the least common multiple? Five. Then for the variables, here I have an x, here I have an x, and here I have nothing. So what variable can I make all of them? Just x. So now I have to ask, one x, times what will give me 5x times 5. So 1 times 5 is 5. 5x times what is 5x? I only have to multiply this one by 1. And then 1 times what is 5x? This one would have to be 5x. So I need to do 1 times 5x, which is 5x. Now that the denominators are the same, we can cross them out, and we can rewrite our equation. So can we solve that now? Absolutely. 5 equals 6 plus 5x. Subtract the 6. And then divide by 5. Now I ask myself, if x equals negative 1 fifth, when I put it back here, will I get a zero denominator? Nope. So then this is good. This is my final answer. Okay, I'm going to do one more example with you. Let's take a look at number seven. So now if you look, number seven is gonna be pretty challenging only because our denominator is such a large expression here. V squared minus five V. What I recommend is in the beginning, you try and factor whatever you can. So I'm actually going to factor this. The GCF, is v. So now here is my new denominator v times v minus 5. Here maybe that's a little hard to see. I'll do that one more time. Here is my new denominator because I factored out the GCF which is v. So now if you take a look at all these denominators, they all have this letter V, but they don't all have this V minus 5. So I want all of these denominators to have that. I want all of these denominators to be the same. I want it to be V and V minus 5, and here to be V and V minus 5, and here to be V and V minus 5. So if you look, at the first one. It has a v, but it's missing the v minus 5. So I have to multiply by v minus 5. v minus 5 times 1 is just v minus 5. 
Over here in the next one, this is already v minus 5. This is already v minus 5 times v times v. So this one only needs to be multiplied by 1. So 1 times all of this is 3v plus 12. And then the same thing for this last one. This one's already v times v minus 5, and it matches. So this only needs to be multiplied by 1. So 7v minus 56. So now that all the denominators are the same, we can cross them out. So this is now v minus 5 plus 3v plus 12 equals 7v minus 56. And yes, we can solve this, but the first thing we need to do, and I hope some of you are saying it in your mind right now, is we need to combine like terms. So, I'm putting my line down so I don't get confused. So if I combine like terms, yeah, I have a v and I have a 3v, which gives me 4v. And here I have a negative 5 and positive 12. If you combine a negative 5 and a positive 12, you get a positive 7. And now I can move over the 4v. I always like to move the smaller v, the smaller variable, but you can move the bigger variable as long as you remember that it would be a negative instead. Okay? So then you add the 56. 56 plus 7 is 63. And then when you divide it by 3, you get that v equals 21. Now, remember, you always have to check. If I put the v back into these denominators, will I get a 0? So by, just by putting a 21 here, you know that one's good. Over here, you have to do 21 squared minus 5 times 21. So let's check. 21 squared times, I'm sorry, minus 5 times 21 gives you 336. So after checking it, this is good. It won't give us a zero. So that is our final answer. V equals 21. So again, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. I'll put the rest of the answers for this page on the uh, bottom of this lesson. And you can also email me or message me on Schoology if you have any other questions regarding this subject. Good luck and have a great day.